Canada. I live in a country called the People's Socialist Democratic Republic of California. We are living under a dictator. He was the dictator in the 1970s, and he's still the dictator today. So that should give you a general idea of what's going on where I live. We are in serious trouble. A lot, a lot of people that I know, uh, they think that Donald Trump is going to save America and make America great again. Wake up. Donald Trump is not going to save America. You want to know how I know that? I can answer it with a question. What's that? Oh, whoa, I went too far. Okay. I can answer that with the question. What is America? America is all of us. So one man is not going to make America great again. We have to make America great again. And what I want to show you guys is how easy some of this really is. Half the battle is just showing up. If you just show up, things that are completely unexpected can happen. So this is my YouTube channel. You can see the name at the top left. It's Grindall61. I hope all of you write it down, go home, watch the video, subscribe. I promise you if you watch these videos, not only will you be thoroughly entertained, but you'll get pissed off. And that, that's, that's what I do. Now, you can see at the top, it says I have 26 million views on the channel. I have no journalism background. I have no training at all with film, and I'm a college dropout. So anybody can do this. And I just started doing it. I started by just showing up to city council meetings, and I just did it. So I want to see with a show of hands, how many of you can name your congressman? Okay, that's good. That, that's actually more than I expected. Most people don't know who their congressman is. What I suggest to all of you is you need to find out who your congressman is and get on their e email list. You'll be surprised at how transparent they are with what they're doing. They'll tell you where they're going. They'll tell you when they're making public appearances. They'll even tell you the propaganda that they're pushing. And when they send you these emails saying, I'm going to be here on this day, go pay them a visit. Or go pay them a visit at their offices. Now, if you have a bad congressman, they need to hear from you. If you have a good uh, representative like Matt Shea, he needs to hear from you. Because if you go to a person like Matt Shea's office and you tell him you're doing a great job, when he goes on the floor of his uh, legislative body, he's going to have that much confidence to fight the people that are fighting against us. So this is my congressman. This is Grace Napolitano. And all these stories I'm going to tell you, they all have a lot of background and there's a lot more I could expound upon, but I'm going to, I'm going to just keep all of them rather short. What happened on this day, we, we went there for one purpose and something completely different happened. So she was holding a town hall and we found out through the emails. It was called Know Your Rights Immigrants Town Hall. And they were teaching illegal aliens how to circumvent ICE. And the things that they were saying were so outlandish that our group, and actually I should have talked about my group a little bit more, uh, I'm involved in an activist group, multiple individuals, and uh, I have, there, there's numerous teams of people that I work with. So on this particular day, the group that I was with, we're an anti-illegal immigration group. So we're hearing things like, if you don't want to live in, in a blue state, go move to a red state. We're hearing uh, from a George Soros operative, she says, if you are uh, undocumented in this country, the first thing you need to do is throw away your papers from your old country. Because it's actually better to be undocumented in this country. So we show up to her town hall. We were only there for about 45 minutes. And because of all these outlandish things they are saying, you know, we're reacting. We have free speech. We're allowed to call them out for what they are doing. Now, oh, every time. Now, at this meeting, this is the mayor of the city of Omani, Andre Quintero. And Andre Quintero was emceeing this event. And we did not know what the status of this individual was until after the fact. But as you can see, he lost it. He, he flipped out and lost his temper with us, and the result was this. We come to find out a couple of days later that Grace Napolitano, she's in her 80s, she had a stroke a couple of years ago, she was about to retire from Congress, and she was 
basically anointing this man to take her spot in Congress. I live in a very safe blue district, and as a result of us showing up, she announces a couple days later publicly that she's running for re-election and that Andre Quintero is not fit to serve in Congress. So just by us showing up to one event, we crap all over his political ambitions. And all of you can do that by just showing up. This, this is uh, the story of my city. I live in the city of West Covina, uh, outside Los Angeles. This is uh, Fred Sykes. He was the mayor of West Covina. And he, uh, the thing that got him kicked out of office is about six months before his term was up, uh, the city council put before him uh, an opportunity to sign an amicus brief to support president, or it was to support the Texas lawsuit that was going on during the Obama presidency about DACA. And he really wanted to sign this document. And the city council, uh, not only did they vote no, but they didn't even second his motion. So there, was, there wasn't even a vote on this. I get tipped off that he signs it anyway. So I go to city council and I exposed him. I said, Fred Sykes signs the document anyway. The, where is he at? The councilman that, that's closest to us, that's at the furthest bottom, he's one of the good guys. He's one of the guys that actually you know, cares about what's going on. As a result of me doing this, and he didn't even know, he then calls out Fred Sykes, the mayor, and accuses him of abusing his power. Uh, and then uh, after this happened, our group, we went to city council and we let them have it. And this is the, uh, the, the article that was in the paper uh, the next day. West Covina residents criticize Mayor Fred Sykes over immigration position. Every person in the city will tell, that is in the note will tell you that Fred Sykes lost his election because of him signing that amicus brief. And if, if I didn't show up and tell them, no one would have known. So here's the, uh, oh, here's the, here's the election result. It says, West Covina City General Municipal uh, Council Member election, vote for uh, no more than two. So you got to get top two to retain your seat. Fred Sykes lost his election by 48 votes, L less than half a percent. So if people tell you that you should not be voting, that you're consenting to some system by voting, that you're wasting your time, they are full of it. Voting does work. I will say that I believe every election in this country is rigged to some extent, but we can outvote the rigging. And on this day, we took down an establishment Democrat candidate and beat him by 48 votes. And you can do that if you just show up to your meetings. <clears throat> so this is, this is uh, Josh Newman. Josh Newman was a state senator in California. In 2016, he was, uh, he was elected unexpectedly because of the Hillary Clinton voter fraud wave that hit California. If you were living in California during the, uh, during the election cycle, you would know that not, you could not find one person that supported Hillary. You couldn't find one sign anywhere or one bumper sticker anywhere, but she magically gets 8 million votes. People like him rode that wave and they got elected. He flipped a red seat in the state senate into a blue seat. He then voted for the SB1 gas tax to raise our gas taxes, and the result was millions of dollars was spent to trying to recall him. So me and one other person, uh, he was holding a town hall. We found out about it. We showed up, and we came with a question that we knew he would stumble on. So we put the camera right in his face, asked him the question, and sure enough, he screws up and doesn't know what he's talking about. Now, this is not really any bearing on the election itself, but it just goes to show what you can do. So he was holding several of these town halls at the time, and we went to another one, and when we went to the next one, he, uh, he, not only did he not show up, but they canceled it without telling anybody. So we come to find out where he lives. He lives a mile away from the town hall. We went to his, uh, we went to his house, and he answers the door in his underwear. And I, I won't go into all the details, but to make a long story short, my video got 16,000 views and, and a lot of people saw it. And Josh Newman was recalled just a, a few weeks ago on June 5th. He lost by 20 points. So e even in the People's Republic of California, we can recall Democrats. This is Mark Steinorth. Mark Steinorth was in the California State Assembly. He is a Republican. He is part of the Gang of Eight. 
in Sacramento that made a deal with Jerry Brown to extend cap and trade. We're the only state in the nation with cap and trade and carbon taxes. As you can see by this picture, he is endorsed by the unions. He is a rhino. So we, after he voted for the cap and trade, we decided to pay him a visit unexpectedly, and we were there for about 10 minutes, and no more than 10 minutes, or 10 minutes after we showed up, here's the scene. They called the police on us, and 30 cops showed up, 20 vehicles, and a helicopter in the sky flying above. They had blue gloves on, and this is what happens in California when, when Republicans show up to a Republican legislator's office to just ask, why did you vote for this? Now, he tried to screw it. Now, actually, I should say, the, the video got 200,000 views. It went viral. And every person who lives in his area that needed to see the video saw the video. Everybody saw this video. The result was he then said that he was not going to run for his uh, uh, assembly seat. And he waited to the last possible date to tell us so that a Democrat could take the seat. This is what Republicans do in California. So he then decided to run for county supervisor, and here's the result. He lost. So he's now officially out of politics. Also, of the Gang of Eight in Sacramento, two of them got knocked out just this last June. So we've knocked out two of the eight that voted for cap and trade. Oh. And so here's my last story. All of these things that I've told you about, you know, th these, are all, these are all team efforts. And this last one I want to tell you about is an individual effort because uh, it was really was just me that did this and I, this was completely unexpected. This is actually the most recent thing that I've done. But before I share that, I just want to tell everybody, go onto your, your search engine and put the name of your city and city council. So if you live in Spokane, search Spokane City Council and just show up to a meeting. I showed up to a meeting and I met someone. That person introduced me to someone else. They introduced me to someone else. They introduced me to Debbie Bacigalupi. Debbie Bacigalupi introduced me to Ed Griffin. And now I'm standing here with, with no college education, no uh, film background, and no uh, journalism background. So very recently, the California legislature, they passed a law that starting 2021, you, uh, it, you are only allowed 55 gallons of water per day per person. So if you live on an acre, you got to kill your grass, kill your trees, kill, all, kill everything that's, that's in your yard. So when this first passed, which was just a few weeks ago, these are the kind of headlines we saw. Permanent statewide water restrictions approved by Governor Brown. New California law limits how much water people can use. Drought or no drought, Jerry Brown sets permanent water conservation rules for Californians. Uh, new water conservation laws may limit how much water cities can use. Now when you look at that, you know, the average person is going to see that and go, oh, more regulations, more taxes, what else is new, right? You know, you, you wouldn't even think anything of it because this is just what they do and this is basically normal. So, uh, so I make a YouTube video and I decided to give it a more accurate title. I called it, California turns off the water. You will not be able to wash clothes and shower in the same day. And the way I came up with that is in one of these mainstream media articles, they said that the average shower that's eight minutes takes 17 gallons. The average washing machine takes 40 gallons. So I'm like, well, 40 plus 17 is 57, and the new law is 55 gallons. So you're going to be at a point where you have to make a choice between washing clothes or showering. Otherwise, you'll be in violation. So as you can see, the video went viral, got over 200,000 views. The next day, uh, InfoWars posted on their website with the title, what's it say? Uh, Agenda 21, no showering laundry on same, same day due to water limits. And then numerous articles came out. California water law could prevent showering doing laundry on the same day. Californians may have to choose between showers and laundry with new 55-gallon water limit. Oh. It is now against the law in California to shower and do laundry on the same day, which, that, that's an inaccurate title, but the point being is... I'm just one guy with a laptop and a camera and a team of individuals and I just made one video and by doing that one video I completely set the narrative on this story. The narrative before was California makes new regulation. The new narrative is you cannot shower and do laundry on the same day and it's because I sat down for two hours and made a video. And any of you can do that. So just, just to wrap this up, the point being, just show up. 
Uh, I wasn't there, but our team showed up one day to a state senator's office. His name's Ricardo Lara. He's openly homosexual. And when they showed up without him knowing, and he was there, they were having a drag party with a full-on cross-dresser dancing around in the office, and they have it on video. So find out who your local electeds are, and just show up unannounced, and you'll be shocked at the things you find out about these people when you decide to say, hey, what's going on? Why are you doing this to us? Thank you very much. Thank you.